Yo, Elliot, I'm 30 years old and I have a daughter with my ex. We managed to co-parent well overall. After letting her go in, in 2019, we recently got back together in 2021, I think, only for it to not work out again after a couple of months. Since I've come to Christ, I know she is not what I want in a wife, but I had to at least try one more time for my daughter. She's caught up in this secular idea that she has to go back to school to get her degree and wants to have a career. I feel like it's too late for that, as she is a mother. She needs to take on the associated duties and responsibilities of a mother, not be gone for 40 hours a week. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. As I was most definitely manipulated by the secular ideology of sport sex, gaming, our relationship was sparked by lust when I was, when we were in our early 20s. My question is, is it crucial, perhaps even a foundational ingredient, for you to be your wife's best friend? I reflect and begin to wonder if we ever were even friends. And if we were, when did that all stop? Now our relationship is much more strictly business when it comes to our daughter, which I'm completely fine with. I still have time to find a young wife to bear many children with. Thank you for answering this question as it will help me find a wife with a successful marriage in this degenerate age. So I'm looking for the question mark here and it is, is it crucial or foundational for you to be your wife's best friend. I have a little bit to say about that. First of all, if you're having sex with a woman right away, which most people do, she's not your friend, she's your drug addict. If you think, oh, I'm gonna have sex with this woman and then we're gonna be best friends, you're, you're deluding yourself. You're not best friends with her, you're addicted to her sex. You have emotional feelings about each other. Let me, I, this is something I used to put, put the other, the other uh, away, and I think it's very helpful. First of all, I have to just kind of, I have to develop what I was saying before. You can't be friends with someone that when you first meet them, you have sex with, because you don't know that person. All you know is the feelings that they give you. You know how she makes you feel, but you have no logical connection to this woman. There is no other reason why you would hang out with her. You just happen to be together with her because you're getting, you're each getting, you're using each other. You're getting what you want in the most base way possible. The most, the most primal, animalistic, deep, dark, ignoble way possible, right? There's nothing noble in having sex, right? No matter what the New Agers try to tell you about spiritual sex, that doesn't happen with fornication. That doesn't happen unless it receives the grace of God through matrimony, which is a sacrament, right? It's a totally different situation than being addicted to someone's body, right? There's nothing there beyond just that. And you know how you know this is true, fellas. Say you're with this girl, right? And you're having sex and you think you're friends with her. You think y'all are best friends, right? Because you like being together because you give each other good feelings. Let's say one day she wakes up and where there was a vagina, a little penis starts to grow. We're just playing make-believe. We're just, it's just a thought experiment. Hang with me. <laughs> Imagine everything's the same. She's the same. Look the same. She even had boobs. All is the same, but a little penis start growing between her legs. And you can't have sex with her anymore the same way unless you, you know, you're having homosexual sex with her. Now, basically, what you have is a small, skinny, fat, whiny dude that you're hanging out with every day. Y'all don't play sports together, you don't play video games together, you don't do the things guys do together. So she don't offer you any real fellowship because she's not a fellow, 
but you're not having sex with her anymore because the hole is closed up. Not only that, we compromise for women, so there are probably some things that you just tolerate, right? She whines or she's grumpy when she has her period, or, you know, we tolerate things with regard to women because, well, depending on your position, right? If, do you love her, right? Which is, usually it's not. In this case, you, most cases it's not. When you're fornicating, it's usually not love, it's lust. So all those various things you now have to tolerate about her, but you're not having sex anymore. She's got a little weird looking little penis hanging out there. You would run. You have to really ask yourself, what am I doing? Why are you here? You start looking at her different, like, damn, why are you here, right? And imagine she did, it wasn't like she had a disease, right? And then you had some like compassion for her. It was just like something she didn't want to tell you about. Maybe she turned out to be, maybe it was a transgender, right? And you, you were having sex in the dark and you didn't realize that she had a penis. I don't know. <laughs> I'm being weird here. It's the last question. Long day. My point is that if you stop having sex with your so-called best friend, nine times, especially if they're fornicating, that means she's not your wife, nine times out of ten, there's no reason for her to be in your life. Why? Why? What are you going to do? What do you guys do together? You know, shopping together? What do you do? Go to the mall and eat ice cream together? What are you doing with a woman? I don't understand guy and girlfriends. Why? Now, I understand acquaintances, right? There are women that I'm acquaintances with. In other words, my family knows her family, right? I know her husband and our families are friends, right? So there's obviously never going to be anything. There's no attraction there, but I appreciate that person. I appreciate you as a, not even as a woman, I appreciate you as a person. I'm thinking of a couple of women in particular. But, you know, I'm like, I appreciate you as a woman. I appreciate you as a person. And there's, no, there's nothing else going on here, but we're not hanging out. We're going to hang out with some other guy's wife for, right? What am I, hey, why hang out with a woman? Why, fellas, really, without... Without having feelings about this, right? If, especially if it's like, oh, Elliot is a misogynist or, or judgment about me. Take me out of the question. Take me out of this question altogether. And you really just sit with this. Why be friends with a woman? What? Wh why? Maybe you have a better answer than me. I'm sure many of you have a better answer than me, right? But for me, I can't figure it out. What can't you get from being around a guy that you won't have temptation, right? There won't be this uh, awkward friend zone thing going on, right? There won't be this, one of us wants to have sex with the other one, but the other one doesn't know. So there's some sort of covert relationship going on. Because it's usually what happens when there's a relationship between a man and a woman. One of the two partners... It could be a, the man or the woman, but one of the two of them have a covert imagination, imaginary relationship with the other. I say nine times out of ten, men and women relationships are dumb. Now, my wife, my best friend. <laughs> See how I did that? My wife is my best friend. I don't trust anybody like I trust my wife. I don't go to anybody about anything, and she, she knows everything about me. I give my heart, soul, life, everything to that woman, and she gives it back to me, and we become one flesh. That's how we can't help but be best friends, right? Like my arm, this arm and me, we're best friends. Without this arm, I couldn't do the things I do. I need this arm. It's attached to me. We are one flesh. That's how my wife is with me. That is what matrimony creates. That's what a biblical marriage is all about. That's what the rightly ordered traditional family is all about. It's about we become one. I don't have, I don't live for myself any longer. Neither does she. I know this is crazy. I know this sounds strange. I know this doesn't work for most people. Your question. Is it crucial, perhaps foundational, for you to be your wife's best friend? No. You become one flesh. You don't marry your best friend. That's another stupid one from Disney. Hollywood teaches us that. Oh, you marry your best friend. No, you get married and become best friends. Do you see how that works? You don't, oh, it's my best friend. 
She's not your best friend. She's a girl that you've been trying to have sex with for eight years who's told you no while she rides a cock carousel. And now that she's getting close to the wall, she's, oh, you know, we've been friends for so long. You've been in the friend zone for so long. You've been wanting to have her for the past eight years while she was partying it up. We are best friends. I tell him everything about all the guys I was riding on. We go shopping together. You know what that means? That was your girlfriend. You're not best friends with that girl. You're her girlfriend. You're her girlfriend. And you've been tagging along like a beta orbiter for the past eight years, and now she's ready to marry you, right? And it goes both ways, right, with guys too, because I think we string, we string these women along way too long also. So it goes both ways. Oh, yeah, we, we, we were friends while out there fornicating. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. You were just an insurance policy if any of those alphas weren't going to marry her up. Now that she got ran through by all the alphas, now you, oh, now she's ready for you. We've been friends for so long. <laughs> you're not friends. You can't be best friends with a woman that you're not having sex with because she doesn't respect you like a man. She sees you as a woman. That's a, write that one down. You're not best friends with a woman that you're not having sex with. You're not best friends with a woman that you're not married to, really, the rightly ordered way. So I know I'm, I'm at my wit's end here today, and this is the last question, but my ultimate answer here is you don't marry your best friend. You marry a wifely woman who becomes your best friend. You see that? It starts here. Most people, best friend is all emotional garbage, right? Oh, it's because you, you lust her. That's what it is. She's your best friend and you tolerate her so she's your best friend. Ain't, ain't no best friend. Wife first. And there's this really good TikTok. I can't, I got to find it somewhere where this guy was talking about, he was a, he was a preacher, so he was talking about the Bible and he was, he was talking about how Isaac, uh, found his wife, Rebecca. And it, the whole thing turned out that Rebecca was a wife before he, she married Isaac. She was wife material. She had all the qualities. She was living her life like a wife, like a woman. And you, here's, this is really important too, in our diabolical age, this is gonna sound crazy, but this is traditional. She behaves like a wife to her father. Not that she, in the way that you're thinking sexually, but if a woman can't serve in her home, in her father's home, she ain't gonna serve outside her home. She ain't gonna, she's not gonna disrespect and dis, be a disservice to her father in her home and then be a, of service to you. If she doesn't know how to be humble with her father and be of service to her family, her parents, she ain't wife material. She don't know how to. She don't know how to do it at home. How's she gonna do it in your home? All of a sudden, she's gonna start respecting men. She never respected her father. This is tough. I deal with my daughters about these things too, right? Because I see, I'm like, you. Are, if you guys can't handle me, you're not gonna be able to handle a man. You're not gonna be able to handle a good man. You might find a beta orbiter that you you've been stringing along. But you're not going to find a good man. You're not going to find a strong man. You're not going to find a protector and a provider, an alpha male that's going to give you a good life. And that's my wife's main mantra. Elliot, thank you for giving me a good life. Because that's what a man does. He gives you a, a life. You want to give a woman a, a, a life, but you only want to give a wife a life. You don't want to give some thought a life. And you won't know if you're looking at her tits instead of looking at her value as a woman as a wife not even value as a not even as a friend friend is so stupid i don't want a friend i want a wife when i'm checking you out i don't i'm not thinking we, we gonna play chess and checkers together or enjoy the same movies together or like the same songs together i'm thinking can you be a wife and then when she becomes your wife best best friend the, the term best friend pales in comparison to what it really is. I say my wife is my best friend, but that, that is such a cheap way to describe what we have going on. We are one flesh. She's a part of my body. That's what Paul says in the Bible. He says, 
Treat her like she's a part of your body. Nobody rejects a part of their body, right? If, you, if a part of your body is ailing, right? Let's say I, I tore my Achilles tendon. I don't cut off that Achilles. I don't cut off my leg. It's a part of my body. I love this because it's me. I, my wife is not my best friend. My wife is me. We are one. So best friend, no. Forget best friend. Wife, life, one flesh, done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.